I was born in Dublin, Ireland, but I came to the United States when I was seven years of age. Well, my parents were Irish born, but they had, didn't know each other in Ireland. They met in New York. So they got married in New York, had their first children in New York. Then during the Depression, when things were not going well, they returned to Ireland hoping for a more comfortable life. Then the war came, and I came, and we were all stuck in Ireland until after the Second World War, when we returned to the United States on an American troop ship. We lived on the west side of Manhattan, up near Columbia University, until I finished grade school. Then we moved to the Bronx because we needed a bigger apartment to take in some of the relatives. Actually, I met a Paulus father when I was an altar boy in a parish on the west side called Notre Dame, and a priest named Thomas McCormick came a couple of times to do novenas and parish mission. I even remember after an evening service in the summertime going for a long walk around the neighborhood, my mother, myself, and Father McCormick. And then later on, he was living at the novitiate when I went there because he was helping oversee the construction of a new novitiate building. I went to school on the west side of Manhattan at Ascension Parish on 108th Street is where the school was. And then for high school, I went to Power Memorial Academy, which was two blocks away from St. Paul the Apostle Church, which brought me into close proximity with the Paulists. It was a Catholic high school, the Irish Christian Brothers, but the priests from St. Paul's used to serve as chaplains. So they would come over for mass and confessions and our annual retreat and other events like that. September 1958, I took the train to Baltimore and I remember on the train I was reading a book called The Nun's Story. Uh, it was popular at that time and it was a story about a woman who had gone into the convent and had a variety of horrendous experiences before she had taken up her life and gone, gone elsewhere. And I don't know what I was thinking of, but maybe that was going to prepare me for what I was in for. <laughs> Must have been some apprehension in, my, in the back of my brain. Interestingly, the high school girl that I was dating when I was a senior in high school went into the convent about two days after I went into the seminary. Well, when I went into the seminary, as you said, you said in 1958, everything was very traditional. The minor seminary experience in Baltimore was probably the same as it had been 20 years earlier. And the novitiate in New Jersey was again very traditional. A year and a day, uh, we were very seldom off the property. Uh, we did not have a lot of contact with what was going on in the world, minimal amount of news. Then when I got to Washington, let's say that was 1961, the world was, the church world, was gearing up for the Second Vatican Council, and conversation became very stimulating. A lot of questions. Will the council address this issue? What about that issue? It's the last time there was a council was in you know, the 1870s, so church has changed a lot, you know, over 90 years. And, uh, and increasingly, going through the seminary, then the council was in session, and getting the latest news from the council was a big, big part of life. Any news sources that were available, anybody who was passing through Washington, who had been working in Rome, who had some would come and give us a little talk, give us some insights, how things were happening kind of behind the scenes, what the dynamics were, bishops from different cultures trying to work things out together. And our professors, who were all Paulists, were absolutely excellent. They were so interested in making sure that we had the most current possible education scripture, dogmatic theology, moral theology. We were so well prepared. Even our study of history, every 
year for four years, we would focus on 500 years of church history. And they would dig into, you know, how things just didn't work in a straight line, but there were ups and downs and there were conflicts and uh, efforts at conflict resolution, uh, compromises. A real understanding of how the church grew almost like a person grows. So when the council was coming to an end and our ordination was approaching, we had our feet on the ground and I think we were really ready to go forward with the church of our time. I don't remember too much about the early part of the day. I know I lived here overnight in the rectory. Uh, I got up in time to go to church in time. I remember that we were surprised who the bishop was. We had expected Cardinal Spellman, but it became evident that he was uh, in decline. And so his principal assistant, Archbishop John McGuire, came to be the ordaining bishop. And I got to know him very well afterwards because I remained in New York as a young priest. My mother was here with my oldest brother uh, who lived in New York, who was an attorney in New York. Uh, and some of my mother's uh, siblings who were, remained unmarried and who lived with us were also present. A couple of days later when I had my first mass at my parish in the Bronx, St. Nicholas of Tallentine, uh, my other brother who was in the Air Force uh, arrived uh, from uh, South Carolina with his wife and children and his oldest child uh, named Brendan made his first communion uh, at my first mass. When I look back at, at how I learned to be the priest that I am now, I really have to say that it wasn't something that I picked up in a certain academic quarter or semester. Rather, it was something that I picked up from the people that I lived with and worked with. I like the Paulus fathers. I like the men who are Paulus. And I have learned from watching them deal with people, watching them discuss issues, listening to them preach, hearing their observations on their ministry, how they work with people in the hospital, how they work with students on a campus. And I've learned from every single one of them at the dinner table, in the common room. They have been my teachers. I really look back and say, you know, they welcomed me into their community and then they shared with me everything that the Paulus community has to offer. And hopefully, I took in all that I should have. And on the other side, hopefully, I pass on as much as I possibly can.